As for uh, the SEC, Nick Saban set to join us here. And uh, is Coach with us? Ready to go. Okay. Uh, Coach, thanks for joining us. You know, we were talking about before you came on that I think you were at Michigan State for four years when Tom Brady was at Michigan for four years. What do you remember about Tom Brady at Michigan? Uh, ooh, that That's interesting because my last year at Michigan State, um, Tom Brady was a senior, and they had a guy named Drew Henson who was – you know, supposed to be a really, really good quarterback and a first round draft pick in baseball and they couldn't they couldn't settle on who should be the quarterback. So we actually beat them thirty four to thirty one. Um and uh I think they scored thirty one points when Brady was playing quarterback and <laughs> they didn't score any when Drew Henson was playing. Uh so uh that's what I remember. <laughs> and and Henson was this two sports star and we didn't really know what Brady was. And then Brady gets drafted by Belichick and the Patriots. He's behind Drew Bledsoe. And then you go to Miami, and then you end up facing Brady a couple of times after that. What do you remember about that? Well, we, we were actually 2-2 um, two and two against the, the Patriots uh, in the two years that I was, you know, at Miami. Uh, but, you know, the Patriots were always – you know, sort of the toughest opponent in terms of they had good players, but they were really well coached. They had really good system. And, um, you know, if Tom Brady was really on his game, you you, you really were in for a, a, a difficult day. So um, that's kind of what I remember. And uh, he, he, he's been a good player for a long, long time. And uh, certainly a great ambassador for the sport. What quarterback kept you up at night, considering all the great quarterbacks you've faced, uh, you know, college or pro? Well, I think when I was a defensive coordinator at the Cleveland Browns for Belichick, you know, you had John Elway, Dan Marino, um, that that whole crew, you know, that came into the league and the uh, in 84 or whenever it was. Yeah. And um, they all, when you're a defensive coordinator, you know, you just really start, you worry about stopping, stopping the other team. So uh, I had lots of sleepless nights over those guys. <laughs> yeah, I think Elway is, might be the most talented quarterback I ever saw in the NFL because he had that strong arm. He was, he could run a two sports star. You know, it, it was just when he lost Super Bowls, then all of a sudden you can't be the greatest of all time when you're losing three Super Bowls. They put all that blame on him. But um, I, I still wonder what Elway would be like in today's NFL. Well, I think it'd be I, – I, he was the most difficult guy to defend. Yeah. And you, you mentioned the reasons why. You know, the other guys were all talented passers and very, very good at that part of the game. But – when you try to defend someone and they're dual threat, um, they have arm talent, they can throw the ball, they can beat you throwing, but then they can take off running, scramble, extend plays. Um, that creates tremendous problems for you on on defense. And that's what John Elway did that the others didn't do. Um, whether he won or lost Super Bowls or not, if you're the defensive coordinator and you're playing them, you're not too concerned about that part. You're just concerned about trying to keep your job. <laughs> uh, we're talking, is somebody cutting you off there, coach? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Just had to. Auburn fan? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> we're talking to uh, Nick Saban, the Alabama head coach, and you're still scheduled to open up uh, at Missouri on the 26th of September. You you uh, feel 100% confident that's going to happen? Well, I think that the mindset with the players for a long time has been, you know, they're practicing, they're trying to get prepared for a season, really with a lot of unknowns, not knowing exactly what was going to happen. And um, so you almost felt like you were sacrificing uh, your time for the season. But I think now, you know, everybody has really looked at it a little different. You have a schedule. You have a first game. Uh, now we're back to investing our time 
in trying to create value for our team, for the individuals on our team to create value for themselves and uh, get ready to play football. And I think that's the only way that we can look at it and um, really almost have to stop thinking about, well, this might happen, that might happen. Those things may or may not happen. No one really knows. But at least we have a defined challenge now that we can look forward to. And uh, that's the mindset that I'm really trying to get our players to take because the uncertainty that we've had ever since March uh, has created a little different mindset for everyone in terms of, yeah, we're doing all this work, but what's it leading up to? And now at least we have direction. So um, our organization is trying to get the mindset that we, you know, utilize everything that we can do every day. We're actually practicing now to uh, try to take advantage of, of creating value and investing in our future. Does it feel a little more normal if if you can apply that word to what's going on now with practice? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, a, a lot more. And uh, even though we're not really having fall camp, we're sort of doing the 20-hour week, which is okay. Um, we, we still have 25 practices. And um, so we're, we're excited about the opportunity, and I think the players are as well. What was it like uh, being around you at home when you couldn't do anything football-wise? Well, I was one of the few people. I think there was three people in our building that could come to work. So the first day that they said you should come home, you should stay home, I had a little Zoom set up, you know, upstairs in my little office. And um, obviously the reason that we were supposed to stay home is you're supposed to stay away from people. So when Miss Terry's, crew came to work about 17 strong cleaning ladies two yard guys you know accountants that come and do her books and run nick's kids i said i'm safer going to work than i am (laughs) staying here so um and the one good thing that came from all this is i never had an email address so people used to send her emails for me and like the first day of the pandemic, she got like 500 emails and she said, you're done. I'm not taking any more of your emails. So if you want, <laughs> if, if you want your information, get your own email. So I, I actually have an email now. Oh, I've, I've really made. Wow. Te- Look at you. Technological progress. <laughs> Here you are approaching 69 years of age, I think uh, in October. And you, you finally got an email coach. Email address. Oh, email. That Damn. is great. Yeah. You can, no, no matter how old you are, you can still improve. <laughs> uh, did you hear the story when your former running back, Josh Jacobs, was on our show last year? Uh, I don't think so. That's where he said that. Uh, let me play it for you. This is what Josh Jacobs had to say. Uh, Save is just like, he likes to do a lot of like these nuts jokes. It's funny because like you, I haven't heard one of them since like, middle school, and then saving. When I went to college, saving used to do it a lot. So wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait what, give me one here. <laughs> All right, so one day I was catching – I caught like five passes um, in a row, and he was like – he was like, hey, hey Josh, if you want to hold all the balls, uh, hold these. I said, what? <laughs> so I just sat there. I sat there for a second. I was like, did he really just said it? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. He was doing D's nuts to you? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, Coach, I ain't heard this is moving. <laughs> uh, Tua confirmed that story there, Coach. Would you like to comment on D's nuts? Well, um, I like to have fun with the players. Uh, I think it's probably good to that they see you every now and then a little bit different light. Um, since I'm a defensive coach and I probably get on the defensive players a little bit more ferociously, um, it's a little easier for me to be lighthearted with the offensive players. And, you know, there's some guys on your team you just love, like Josh Jacobs to, uh, you know, <laughs> Henry Ruggs. You know, that we've had a lot of really good players on offense that have great personalities and great work ethic, and you just love them. And those are the kind of guys I usually pick out to do all the tease and stuff. I love it. I th- We laughed when – I've been – I've been doing this a long time, Coach. I never thought that I would bring up that topic with you under any circumstances. But then after Josh and Tua brought up that your sense of humor, and I said, I love hearing that story. So 
you don't have to apologize or anything or you know uh, it, it was great i got a big chuckle out of that yeah well, i'm <laughs> glad they at least they remember something <laughs> we tried to teach them <laughs> well good luck with uh, the whole process there coach and uh we'll be uh we'll be waiting for the 26 when you face missouri Okay, Dan. Thank you, Coach. Best luck to you. All right, buddy. Stay safe. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.